So, and this is an afterlife movie that also yeah. found an afterlife because yeah. this was yeah. a short film once After, upon a time. After afterlife. <laughs> right. Um, uh, tell me about some of the challenges of adapting this from the original short version to well, a full I mean, I, feature. You know, I feel great. It was fun at the time because as an animator to do a live action thing, which was great. It kind of got me into a whole other world, which I loved. And, and uh, But over the years, you know, I love stop motion, done a couple other stop motion and it just felt I sort of went back to the original idea of this and the fact that it was such a based on a memory for me and it was just so interesting going back and thinking of that time and other memories and like remembering like other kids in school you know the weirdness of them and strange teachers and even down to the setting of Burbank trying to set it more so it sort of became a full kind of memory piece in that way in the sense of thinking of other monsters and monster movies that I loved so, you know, the idea of stop motion, black and white, 3D, all the other characters just made it feel like a whole different project. Yeah, and, I, and as someone who I, I'm a fan of yours, I'm a fan of Americana, mid-century, uh, monster movies, stop motion. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I was struck by as I was watching this film is I started thinking about how in recent years, even just the last five or ten years, a lot of the things that were subculture, that were underground for us, yeah, yeah, yeah. are mainstream now. Oh, yeah. You know, well, I mean, that's the whole thing. It's like, and also with the references, I tried to be careful. It's like that, that you don't necessarily need to know these references to hopefully enjoy the film, because the whole point was to try to just give the vibe of those films and not necessarily, like, oh, I that's from that, you know, because most kids or even adults probably don't know what the references are. So it was important to try to make it not integral to hopefully enjoying the film. But, yeah. you know, I mean, these are the kind of things, we're all sort of a product of our upbringing and the things that you like as kids or whatever. So it, it's understandable why things, you know, remain because they're the, th you know, they're the things that inform us and are part of our life and part of our DNA and are meaningful. I was reading Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns as a kid when my dad took me to the drive-in to see your Batman. And it's just so funny because at the time, you know, I remember thinking like, oh, he's nailing it. This is like what Batman really is. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because people said it was dark no, I know. back then. I know. Now it's like a lighthearted romp, you know, I mean, you know, when you <laughs> think about it. But it, I mean, that, that's what was interesting at the time because it was, you know, a bit of a struggle, you know, but, but it felt like new territory at the time, so it was, you know, it was exciting to do.